so <clears throat> now we will see that how this Kalman filter is implemented in a MATLAB code so this will do two things for you one is it will uh, and say uh, refresh your whole theory once because every all the things are given in their equations are given in over here so if you see this is uh, try to see this cursor and uh, if you see this uh, this is the tutorial paper which i have uh, from where i have taken the material for for this lecture and if you remember this is the state equation which we talked about so this is xk fk minus 1 to xk minus 1 gk and this is the part which is taken as error path the other part is by k it is also called measurement equation here i have written it as output equation this is also common to say it is output equation but it's more common in uh, control literature there so there we are putting output equation but it is basically a measurement equation yk is equal to hk xk plus this noise in measurement so if we move further <clears throat> here is that equation which tells you how we predict the xk given k minus 1 using the same formula in the model so this is xk given k minus 1 predicted using the model and this is the pk that is covariance error covariance matrix predicted uh, that kth instant from the error which is generated at k minus 1 th instant so fk minus 1 pk minus 1 fk minus 1 transpose somehow transpose is missing over here but it is basically transpose plus this is the noise part and then <clears throat> finally this is the Kalman gain using that pk k minus 1 hk and so on so this formulas you remember hopefully and this is the <clears throat> other one and that how to correct xk the predicted new state xk so this plus Kalman gain old sk given k minus 1 plus the carbon gain over here and this is the <coughs> error in measurement then pk is updated in this way once the error is known in pk and therefore we have a new p now let's come to the actual part this was all comments so here what we will do is we have taken n is equal to 1000 which is the number of time steps we are going to simulate the system for this is the sampling time at which we will be updating each of the steps so the total time is the given time at a t instant will be delta t into that particular n that is it, uh, that is the step time step number this is f if you remember 1 delta t 0 and 1 for the same falling body problem this is g this is also this was also derived this is the measurement uh, model h and here q is taken as noise and we assume that there is no noise so it is clear that there is no noise <coughs> and excuse me and this is g which we talked about and there is some initial position y0 and v0 so y0 and v0 are the two initial but that means when we are uh, when we will be starting our system we need to have when say i want to get xk1 for example if i want to use this formula then if i want to have xk1 given k minus 1 so k0 should be given so x0 will appear here so for that when you start the system you need to have some initial states so this y0 and v0 are the initial states so if you remember the first set is <coughs> y0 that is h that was the height here and v0 is the velocity so we assume that the v0 is 0 and the height is 100 
that is initial the, you can also make uh, this, this this may not be exact this you can have error even in this <coughs> so that is the starting initial things and then now here we see that how the true states evolve that means we have a true states that means let us assume that the true states are one in which the um, the falling body obeys the laws of motion exactly so that are the two states this one the true state so st xt the position and velocity at kth instant so this is the way of writing that array along with the instant kth instant and then this is the um, position and velocity using laws of physics now what we do from that is we try to generate the noisy measurements from the true state measurements so or true states so we have the true state and what we do is we generate noise v as this way some random number between 1 to n so there are set of random numbers which are generated between 1 and n and this i have taken as r equal to 4 so measurement if you remember the r matrix there is only one measurement so there is only one r so that r is 4 and i say that the random number is from plus <coughs> uh, plus minus 4 in between that this one square root of 4 so this is actually the actually the sigma and this is the therefore this is the uh, generated measurement noisy measurements which we say so these are the actual state plus the error is added so now we have the measurements which we are uh, of course simulating here which we will be seeing through that laser finder then <clears throat> these are some other things which i want i had plotted earlier to see that this is working properly so basically this is now under comment line one can remove this comment and run the program to see that z is plotted appropriately now let's do the Kalman filtering estimation so here <coughs> so x is uh, what i am taking is from 0 2 to n the first one will be i will be taking it as some value assumed value that is the initial values and this rest of the x is initialized and uh, the first one what i am taking here is 10 and 0 so there is some problem which i explained something wrongly over there the initial states okay this was true initial state okay that was the true initial state and now what I'm doing here is since that data has been generated what I'm going to measurement and how, how what I'm going to measurement and how the falling body has the velocity and everything so that error measurement erroneous measurements and the actual true falling of body has been uh, already been generated through those two equations now here x is 10 0 so I'm making initial state guess so here the initial that was true guess here the initial guess is only 10 and 0 so i am taking the initial guess as 10 so that is itself an error then i have taken a p matrix that is initial error in position could be 50 so i can the error is 50 here and 0 0.01 over here in velocity now let's do the estimation let's try to do the same through the mm, Kalman filter so for 2k is equal to 2 to n if you see this is xk k minus 1 8th one that is we talked about and that means uh, i should write here finding x k k given k minus 1 that is what i am doing over here and sorry i just have to stop this recording for a while so from here we'll 
I'll continue further. So you saw that uh, this xk is calculated and then I am upgrade, updating the p matrix or error covariance matrix from that error with the help of f. So f at k minus 1. So I am also updating. So this is equivalent to p k given k minus 1 if you can relate this to the theoretical part which we have done. Then I am calculating the Kalman gain. So Kalman gain which depends on P matrix H and R. So this together gives you the <coughs> Kalman gain. And this is the final update for the XK. So this is XK. This is the error part ZK minus HXK given k minus this all are at given k minus 1 and this is the final hk which i am talking about so this is final xk and this is xk at k minus 1 so programming allows us to write in, it in this way and then the final update in the error covariance matrix once this is calculated can be made with the help of the kalman gain <clears throat> now let us see what we have done. so this will be evolving in uh, time so k steps so thousand steps it will run and then we will plot so let us see what we are plotting here we will plotting basically two things two set of things one is what is the measured value one what is the estimated so obviously this is z part and this is the true part which we generated earlier and the estimated through kalman filter so we'll see that how this estimated is closer to true value even as compared to this measured value when you take the measured value independently it is having errors and when you use this kalman filter this becomes closer to true value then <clears throat> let us go further these are the three things which we have done then later on we will also see what is the uh, differences that is the error in the uh, in the measured uh, that is the estimated value from the true value so how these two are different both for velocity and time so let us run the program and see what happens <clears throat> so it's running in the so it has run so these are all not to worry these are all warnings and we must have got the figures also so let us see the first set of figure first set of figure is basically showing us the position part and the velocity and, uh, let me enlarge them so if i enlarge them and see you can just see them this is green one is the measured one so it is going up and down that is the measured one the blue one is the estimated one and this dotted line is the true one So if you see closely this one if I make it large you can just see this this the measure value it's sticking. okay that was good so this is what we are seeing this measured value and the and the estimated values are quite close as compared to the error uh, the measured one that was the uh, thing which we were, we were expecting and uh, this is how we can get so this is for the position similarly if you see the uh, velocity part it is again uh, very close the measured value and the uh, this one is almost coinciding measured value and the uh, obviously we are not measuring actually the uh, this one this is between estimated value and the true value because the velocity is not been measured 
So we see that it is quite close. Now let us go to the second set of plots, which shows us the uh, shows us the errors. So this, if you see, is the error in the position, and this is the error in the velocity part. So this is uh, don't go by this one. So if you see the error in the velocity part between the measured one and the estimated one, you just see it close to zero if you check what we find here is okay so just see the error in the starting so if you remember we had a, a starting error we assumed that uh, we are uh, initial state is 10 where was the actual initial state in the true value was 100 and we can see that error over here at zero point that error is there here it start here so this is zero error and that means it reaches to zero error but in the start it is 90 so when you start it you start the simulation it is showing error of 90 feet or meter whatever you take height difference because we took it very wrongly so the starting point was as soon as the simulation started it took the error to zero that means it could estimate the uh, the high uh, through that equation and this is the error in the velocity part, which is obviously going up and down here. We are not measuring the velocity, but we are just having the same estimated similar characteristic as the noise characteristic because we are not getting any help from the measurement as such. So here we can see. So you can what you can do here is further you can take this program and uh, put different uh, values of the noise and so on and just check up to what extent this Kalman filter can give you the results. And I feel that is all to understand a Kalman filter. Thank you. Thank you everybody.